I got my four-year bachelor's degree in one year and for about $7,000. Because of the college I went to, my graduating classmates paid about $50,000 for the same degree. And I did it by testing out, which is what this channel was originally about. It was the whole process of how I did it and trying to give you guys tips on how to do the same thing. But then I discovered that that topic is just way too boring for YouTube. However, I'm still really interested in helping people do it. So two things are going on here. One is I am dropping the college stuff from YouTube, probably, unless I get a lot of comments about people wanting to know more, in which case I'll totally make more videos answering those questions. Number two is I'm gonna keep my blog going which is all about how to do it because I think it's just better formatted, better suited for the format of a blog. And this whole video is gonna be the rundown of how to do it. Now, there's a lot of details. Just stick with me if you care about this. And if you don't, please click away. My other videos might be more interesting to you, which are about productivity and um, gamification. I'm trying to learn about gamification and apply those principles to productivity. Anyways, if you are here to figure out how to test out of your degree, then keep watching and we'll go over it now. So I started taking exams when I was high school age and I took CLEP exams, which stands for College Level Examination Program. Those are offered by the College Board, which is the same people that does AP, SAT exams, and they are a lot like AP exams, but CLEP exams can be taken by adults as well. And basically you're testing out of one subject to earn the college credits for it. And then you transfer those credits to your college, just like AP exams. So you test out of one subject at a time, say US history, if you pass the test, you can transfer it to your college, get three credit hours for that requirement. There's a lot more to it than that, but that is the gist of it. So when I was in high school, my mom wanted me to try these exams because she didn't want to spend 50 plus thousand dollars for my education. And I wasn't that stoked about it because I wasn't paying for it and couldn't see that far ahead into my future at 14, but I tried it and eventually got into it. And I passed my first one and then I failed my second one. It was um, Intro to Western Civilization and my book was ragged. I had worked so hard on it. So I was really disappointed when I failed. There is a waiting period back then. It was six months. Now it's only three months for CLEP exams at the time of filming this video. For those six months, I got a tutor, kept studying. Now the book was really, really ragged and I failed again. And I was totally heartbroken because I really had my hopes up for passing that time. And at that point, I decided to write off CLEP exams entirely because just taking a regular college course would have been a lot faster than that, even though in theory, you can test out of CLEP exams quicker. Fast forward to me being an adult, I had already worked some jobs and I was looking for an affordable way to get my degree because I knew that would open up a lot of job opportunities in the field I was currently working in. I decided to look into testing out again because that was the only way I knew of to save a ton of money aside from scholarships, which I didn't know how to get, and community college, which at that rate was taking forever. I had taken like two regular community college courses and I hated it. I was taking them at night after work and it was just awful. So I found an article by one of my favorite bloggers named Scott Young, and it was actually a guest post, but it was on his blog by this guy named Jay Cross, who started a business called DIY Degree helping people test out to get college credit. I will link that article below. You can learn a lot about it in that blog post. And that blog post is what inspired me to reach out to him, get some help on planning my degree, and then go on to get my degree by exam. After reading that blog post, I realized there was no way in heck that I was gonna be able to test out quickly and efficiently if I didn't find better resources than the stupid REA book I was using back in high school when I was trying to prep for the exams. So I found some better resources and decided to take one exam. If I was able to pass it in a reasonable amount of time, then I was gonna keep going. And if not, I was gonna be done with testing forever. I passed the exam and I think I only studied for about two weeks, which made me decide to take on the challenge of getting my entire degree in a year. Now I had some credits to begin with. I had about 12, but still you need 120 for your bachelor's degree. So I had a long way to go, but I read that other people were able to do it in a year at the rate that I had just passed that test. So I made a plan to test about once a week, giving myself a little more time for the harder tests. And I went at it to get my degree in a year. And as I spoiled in the intro, I was able to make it even though I had a lot of hiccups along the way. And there were challenges in getting the degree itself, but most of those hangups were because of a personal relationship that was really unhealthy and a tragedy in my family that happened in that same year. But I was still able to get back on the wagon after all of that and complete my degree and 
I did it by just using resources and trying really hard to test once a week. And I wasn't working at the time, which also made it easier for me. If you're working, you probably won't be able to do it in a year. Although I think it's possible. I think people have done that too. At the end of it all, I flew from my hometown in California to New Jersey to graduate from my college, Thomas Edison State University, which I had never been to in person because I tested out of almost everything but I went there for the graduation. That was longer than I intended, but now onto the details of how you can do it. So I kind of explained what testing is already. You're taking a test to get these credits and then you're able to transfer them to your college. Now, a question that you might be thinking is, is this legit? Well, only if your college will accept and grant you credit for these exams. Most colleges do, I'd say about 50%. I think right now the number is like 2,700 in the US right now will accept things like club exams. And then there's other ones, which I'll talk about. So most colleges do, but not all colleges do. And if your college doesn't accept these exams or grant you credit for them, doesn't allow you to transfer them in and meet your requirements, then no, they're not legit. And they're totally useless unless you transfer them to another college in the future. But I would answer, yes, they're legit in the way that they do transfer to many regionally accredited colleges. I recently got a comment on one of my videos, national versus regional accreditation, and an email from a really nice guy that was informing me about something I didn't know about that, um, which basically there's been a few changes to it. So I'm going to link some articles about that below, but I'm not going to get into that right now. The deal is that a lot of uh, legitimate non-degree male colleges like state colleges will accept and grant you credit for these exams. So they are legitimate in that way. Oh, I'm getting on such a rant. There's so much information here and I don't know how to package it in a way that will not confuse you and bore your tears, but I'm really going to try here. Okay. I'm trying. So different colleges accept different amounts of transfer credit. And that is one of the key pieces here. That's one of the most important details to know. So some colleges like um, off the top of my head, Liberty University accepts a lot of transfer credits. I think they accept about 90, which is about three years of a bachelor's degree. And then you have to take the final year through them. And so you can transfer those credits from pretty much any legitimate college, as long as they'll meet the requirements that Liberty University wants you to meet. So they can be a ton of exam credits. They can be just regular courses from other colleges. So the first thing you have to look at is how many transfer credits your college will let you transfer. Now there are three colleges and one of them is getting worse. So sort of two now that will let you transfer a ton of credits. I say three that because these are only the three that will let you transfer almost hundred percent that are legitimate colleges, which are Thomas Edison state university, charter Oak state college and Excelsior university. Excelsior University has been getting worse over the years, so I don't know where they're going to be at in a year or two, but for now, they're still pretty darn good. Now, there are also a lot of other colleges that will still let you transfer like three years, like Liberty University. But when I'm talking about the big three as far as testing out, that's colleges that will let you do almost all four years. Back when I got my degree, they did let you do the whole thing virtually by exam, just testing out on your own time. Now, even the best one, in my opinion, which is Thomas Edison, still makes you take a few courses through them. Um, you have to take the capstone through them. And then with most majors, you're going to have to take a few other classes through them too, because they're just not offered as exams. Now, CLAP is pretty much only for general education courses. So you're going to have to use other exams in addition to CLEP. That also will transfer to a lot of universities. Different universities have different policies. Some will only accept CLEP. Some will only accept CLEP and DSST, which is another very widely accepted exam. And then some will accept pretty much any exam that is approved by ACE, which is the American Council on Education. Again, I'm going to put a ton of links to more information below. I'm just trying to give you the rundown so you can kind of understand it. I've done a lot of um, free calls to try to explain to people how this works. And these are kind of the conversations we have and most of the things they ask about and what I end up explaining. So. I'm just trying to give you the rundown. There's going to be more links below and please don't worry if you don't understand it all because nobody does right at first. I didn't. It took me like a year to research it enough to understand all this actually way more than that. I've been researching this way more than that, but to understand enough to want to get my degree this way took me a long time. I hired help and then I still ended up doing a ton more research as I got my degree. Okay. So the different exams, some of them you take in person, but most of them, especially since COVID can be taken online. Some of them are just an exam. You just study however you want to. Like if you were already a history buff, you wanted to take the exam tomorrow, you could do that. Some of them have some course content too. So there's some quizzes that will factor into your score and you have to cover some of their content before they'll let you take the final exam. 
Some of them have assignments, but that's very rare. But those are some of the upper level courses and like writing courses that once you do some quick essays and things like that, although it's still way less assignments than you're gonna do in a real classroom. I'll guarantee you that. Some of the most common ways to get these credits, test providers are CLEP, DSST, study.com, Straighterline, uh, Schmoop, which I personally don't like at this time. Very unpopular opinion there. Not gonna get into that either, but um, check them out if you're interested, maybe you'll like them. Um, what else? Oh, UXL exams and TECEP exams, which are offered by Thomas Edison State University. They're like their challenge exam, but they transfer to a lot of other colleges. And UXL exams are the challenge exams made by Excelsior University, but they also transfer to a lot of other colleges. And those are some ways that you can get some of those higher level courses um, that are more major related instead of just the general education courses. Cause there's tons of providers for the general ed stuff. And yeah, you can do just your gen ed stuff. If you wanna just test out of those and then go in class for all of your major related stuff. But if you're trying to test out of as much of your degree as you can, you're gonna have to find some exam providers that offer upper level tests. I hope this is making sense. Okay, so you're gonna have to do degree planning to do this, which is just figuring out which course will meet which requirement because your academic advisor is not gonna wanna do all of this for you. They will help you a little bit. Like if you say, hey, will this exam meet this requirement? They'll probably give you a yes or no answer. They might send you some transfer equivalency sheets, which will show you what exam will meet what requirement at the college. So it'll say this introduction to psychology course will meet our psychology 101 requirement. But you're gonna have to do most of that research on your own because they're not gonna find those courses for you. They'll just tell you yes or no if they'll work to meet that requirement. And usually you have to be enrolled for them to help you out very much with that, so keep that in mind too. So for most of it, you're gonna have to do your own degree planning. Now I'm gonna write way more blog posts on degree planning. I have a um, YouTube video about degree planning, which I will also link below. Um, and on degree forum, you can find a ton of information about how to do your degree plan. Because just because a college accepts CLEP or DSST or study.com exams does not mean they'll accept any exam. You have to take the right one to meet the correct course requirements and take the right combination of courses. Cost, most exams are about $100. They usually average to about $100. Um, then there's a proctoring fee, which is the cost that it takes for either a in-person proctor or a virtual proctor to watch you and make sure you're not cheating. I'll link more things about price below. Um, and then the different providers have different plans, like Slay.com lets you take two exams for, I think it's 200 a month right now. I would estimate about $100 per exam, and I think that's pretty safe. But then you're gonna have to take pay the college costs at the end, so you're gonna have to enroll in those last few courses. If you have zero college credits and you are trying to test out of most of your degree, it'll end up costing you about seven to $10,000 still because you have to pay for all these exams and you have to pay some of the college fees to graduate. But still, you're saving a lot of money because keep in mind, the other people that are taking all the courses through these colleges or even that are taking two years through a community college and taking the last two years through these colleges are paying a lot more, like tens of thousands of dollars more. So you're gonna be saving so much money if you do it this way. And a lot of time. You could get your four-year bachelor's degree in a year if you really work at it. Um, if you're working, it'll probably take more like two years, but still like, this stuff can be done really fast. And there's a ton of stories on degree form about how people have done this. Degree form is getting a little bit negative lately. I don't know what it is, but they're really nice people for the most part. So don't let it get you down. Just uh, steer clear of the people that are being whiny and um, it should be really helpful. Sometimes people ask, are there good majors for this? Cause yeah, you can't be a doctor by testing out of your whole degree, of course. But um, majors that work really well for this are business, psychology, sociology, computer science, nursing, you can test out of quite a bit. Those are the main ones. And as they come up with more exams that you can test out of, their options are just getting better. And with pretty much any degree, you can test out of about two years. Just be careful with the hard sciences because anything that requires labs, you're probably gonna have to do an in-person lab for. I got my business degree, so like I didn't need any labs even for my science courses, but if you're going into a science major, like a hard science major, you're probably gonna need labs, even for those lower level science courses, in which case, don't test out of those. Um, but it's more about the college than the major. If you're just trying to test out a part of your degree, and then if you're trying to test out your whole degree, you're a little more limited, but you can test out a huge amount of it with 
most majors. You might have to do a, t- a couple essays, like with CLEP exams, the way they do the essays is you just take them at the test center, so they're a super quick, impromptu essay that you spend like 50 minutes on, and of course they don't expect it to be perfect because it's so quick. Um, and then like say.com, you send an essay and then they'll send it back to you with some criticism. You're able to revise it, I think two to three times, three times, I think with most of them. Um, and then some of the upper level courses will have other little projects. Like I did this public speaking one where I had to record myself giving a fake public speech. So they have workarounds for that. Um, just look at the requirements of the course you're taking. Employers. I don't think employers care. I, I don't think they care. For one thing, they're not going to know because your degree looks the same. Um, and I think you should, they should know, you should tell them because it's a selling point. Because if you are able to have the motivation to study at home with no class times and no deadlines and get through your whole degree faster than you otherwise would have, that is a great testament to your work ethic. Some of the people that I've helped get through college this way have amazing work ethics and I would hire them in a heartbeat. So Use it as a selling point because it's not easy to self-motivate yourself all the way through college. And if you're finding a cheaper and faster way to do something that shows an employer that you can probably do that for their company too. I'm not trying to throw shade on regular college. That's great too. But I wouldn't be ashamed of it. Be proud of it. Tell your employer if you want to. And if you don't want to tell them, they're probably never going to know. They might know that you graduated from an online college if you transfer these credits to a college that's only online. But you could also transfer these credits to a college that is in person. And then you can finish up in class at this in-person college. So in that case, they're not going to know unless they order your transcripts and look at every class on your transcripts. I mean, it's sort of like taking AP exams. Like, no, employers aren't going to care. Could it happen? Of course it could happen. Disclaimer, if it happens, don't blame me, but I really don't think it's likely. Okay, how to study. There's a lot of different resources. And I think some of the best ones are anything that gives you feedback, like quizzes. So Instancer is really good. Speedy Prep is really good. Study.com has little quizzes along the way. Um, any kind of flashcards where you can measure your progress. Practice tests are one of the best things you can possibly do for prepping for a test, even before you're ready to see if you're ready for the test. So at the very beginning, start with practice tests. Use them for your entire study process. There's a lot of open courseware stuff. For each exam, there's a lot of different resources, but if you want something really guided, go at study.com or straighterline and they will walk you through everything instead of feeling like you're trying to mix and mash your own curriculum. And even if you're not taking like an exam through study.com, you can use study.com to study for a CLEP exam. That can be good if you want a lot of structure. So like I mentioned, I'm gonna link that Scott Young link below. Degree Forum, Degree Info is a good site. Um, my website, examgremlin.com, I think has hopeful, helpful blog posts, hopefully. If you found this helpful or anything on that blog helpful, if you could like this video, I would really appreciate it. That's the biggest compliment you could give me. Your registrar is also a very important person to talk to. Make sure they confirm every exam you're gonna take before banking on it transferring. The hardest thing is staying motivated. Like I know all this research sounds so confusing, but it is like by far the hardest thing is just keeping motivated yourself. So it's not for everybody. If you don't think you can stay self-motivated, it's probably not for you, but if you can like make self-imposed deadlines and schedule those exams and then just like stick to it and not cancel them and prep so that you'll be ready by that exam day, make your own timeline, things like that. It's an amazing way to get the same degree for way less money and way less time. I am not a particularly self-motivated person, especially before I did this challenge. I don't think I was. I think it sort of changed me in the way that it taught me that I can be self-motivated for a long period of time which surprised me because I had never been that successful at it before. And if you want help, reach out to me on my website. I'd love to try to help you. Let me know if there's anything else you wanna know. If it's a big enough topic, I'd be happy to make another video. Or maybe I'll just make quick videos and just put them on my website instead of my YouTube. I don't know. We'll see where the world takes us. I just wanna be helpful. I guess that's one thing I realized too. It's like, yeah, this topic's too boring for YouTube, but also, I have a really hard time helping people stay motivated. I can give them every step-by-step -step instruction on how to plan your degree, which exams to take, how to study for the exams, but if they can't stay motivated and they fall off the wagon, there's no point. So I am hopefully going to become a YouTube productivity guru, just kidding, um, make a bunch of productivity videos and like learn about this stuff and learn what motivates people and learn what motivates me and then if I can be helpful in that way, maybe I can transfer it to helping people actually get through their exam and test out of college because that's the hardest part. 
Everything else can be learned pretty easily, even though it sounds really overwhelming. Okay, this is so long. I'm terrified at how long it's gonna to take to edit all this information and it's still not gonna be digestible or entertaining at all because it's so dry and I know that. But if you stuck with this and you watch this whole thing, congrats because that's pretty much all the info you need to know. I mean, there's a lot more, but that's like the gist of it. And most people I know because I talked on the phone with a ton of people that were interested in this because I ran Facebook ads for a while. And like most people get so overwhelmed by even a little bit of this information. And that's when they have me on the phone and I can like answer any question as they throw it at me. But if you're just watching this and like trying to consume this flood of information and you stuck it out and you're like not totally overwhelmed, good job. And it's not as, it's not as complicated as it seems, I promise. Like I was never a big research person. I knew absolutely nothing about how college stuff worked before taking these exams. Like I just learned it all. You can too. Just try not to be intimidated by it. Um, it is all figure outable. There's tons of help out there. I would love to help you. I know there's people on degree form that would really like to help you. Lots of awesome people. There's other awesome people that have made YouTube videos about the stuff. Oh, there's not much about it on YouTube, probably because it's a dry concept. So yeah, stick with it. I really hope that you get through it and whatever your goal is, whether it's to test out of one course or three courses or 40 courses, I really hope it works for you. And um, just really excited for anybody that is watching this. I know the audience is super small and that's why I'm switching directions. Um, but anyone that is interested in college and is finding this, like you can do it, good luck. There's help out there. Just buckle down and like, don't give up on figuring out how it all works. Don't be intimidated by that part. The harder part is staying disciplined, but you can do that too. If I did it, I really think anybody can do it. Um, okay, that's all. Have a great day.